Hi, my name is Spencer Melby. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. I work at Barnes Jewish Hospital and Washington University in St. Louis. Today I'll be talking just a minute on some research I've done and the toxicity of inadequate pericardial drainage after surgery and the implications that has for patient recovery. Postoperative atrial fibrillation is a very common complication after heart surgery. It's the most common complication we see after heart surgery. The incidence of post-op atrial fibrillation has not changed in decades despite research. We've tried to introduce new treatments. We've attempted to introduce prophylaxis for this, but really there's been no change in how often it occurs. If you look at the graph to the right there, you can see a study we did at our institution that showed that from the 80s to the 90s up to 2005, and I'll tell you even today, the incidence of post-operative atrial fibrillation, it's about 30%, and it hasn't really changed in decades despite the research I just mentioned. There is a known increase in mortality that's associated with post-operative atrial fibrillation. There's increased risk of stroke and hospital length of stay, and it's an expensive complication. Each time a patient gets post-op AFib, on average, it costs about $10,000 to treat it. We know there are a lot of, of, of risk factors for post-operative atrial fibrillation, and we can, in, in general, predict what some of those risk factors are and, and who might get post-op AFib. But because it's so common, we see it so commonly, there's a lot of different risk factors. And a lot of our patients show up with some of these risk factors. For example, my, myocardial infarction, persistent congestive heart failure, respiratory failure, infection, renal failure, cardiac arrest. Those are all things that happen to a patient before surgery, and those are associated with higher rates of postoperative atrial fibrillation. We also have seen in that study that I showed you over decades at our institution and in other large series that have been demonstrated at places across the world that if you have increased bleeding after heart surgery, that you have an increased risk of post-op AFib. And the higher or the, the, the higher your level of bleeding, the higher your risk of post-op atrial fibrillation. I'm gonna show you a little study here that supports that. This was done by Teddy Fischlein's group in Germany a few years ago, which he took the standard chest tubes and replaced them with a, a chest tube that has active clearance technology. And he showed a decrease in the rates of post-op AFib if you were able to clear out the pericardial space a little more efficiently. So if you look at this graph here, on the far left where it says phase zero, you see there are 543 patients uh, and the rate of post-op AFib at baseline using the standard chest tube was about 30%, 29% in the study. And again, that's pretty standard what it is across, across the world, is generally about what people, people report for their cardiac surgery patients. It can be higher if you have more complex or, or older patients, but roughly 30%. When he introduced this new chest tube technology that cleared out the pericardial space, and it just has a little wire that helps to clear out that chest tube so that the, the tubes remain patent, then he demonstrated once the, the nursing and, and everybody was on board and using those chest tubes effectively, the post-op AFib rate dropped down to 20%. So there was about a 30% reduction in post-op AFib. And then they took the new technology away, went back to the old system, evaluated what the post-op AFib rate and went back up and that it was not statistically different than the baseline. And this is just, I think, a nice little demonstration that if you can drain what's in the pericardial space better, then you can reduce the rates of post-op AFib. So we've been asking this sort of question for a while in, in my laboratory. We set up a study where we looked at 100 patients and we looked at what's in the pericardial fluid, attempting to identify factors that may contribute to this, this common complication, post-op AFib. So what we did in these 100 patients is when we started the study, uh, they'd come into the operating room. As soon as we opened the pericardium, we would take some pericardial fluid and use that sort of as a baseline and an internal control of each patient has their own control of what's in the pericardial fluid before you even operate on them. And then after they had their heart surgery, and these were standard surgeries, either a cabbage or a valve or a simple cabbage plus valve, not, nothing more complex than that. Once they had their surgery and caught back to the ICU, Four hours later, we'd take another pericardial fluid and we do that at 12 hours, 24, and 48 hours. So we had several samples of pericardial fluid at these different time points. Then we took the pericardial fluid and we evaluated it for the levels of multiple different cytokines, interleukins, tumor necrosis falca, uh, tumor, excuse me, tumor necrosis factors, interferons, and other things. We also took the fluid on a subset of patients and did flow cytometry to look at what specific cell types were in that fluid. And I'll show you some of those results. And then finally, we did PCR on the fluid. We found that the 
cytokine levels are sky high in the pericardium. They're, they're much higher they, than they are in the peripheral blood, but we weren't really able to tease out any cytokines that were specifically higher in patients that had post-op AFib versus those that didn't. But, but what we did note was that patients that had more neutrophils in their pericardial fluid after surgery tended to have more post-op AFib. And this is a, a graphic representation of that. If you look at this dot graph, you'll see at time point zero, all of these 10 patients that had um, flow cytometry had almost no neutrophils in their pericardial fluid before you started their surgery. So right after they went to sleep after induction, we opened the pericardium, the percentage of neutrophils was almost zero in all the patients. But within four hours after surgery, the percentage of neutrophils jumps to 40%. And within 24 hours, 50%. And 48 hours later, about 60% neutrophils are now found in the pericardial fluid. There's a huge change in the cell population that occurs in the pericardial fluid. We, we, when we looked at it in the, in the flow cytometry findings, it looked like a, a neutrophil riot going on in the pericardial space. We also separated these 10 patients Four, to, four of them had post-op AFib, and their rate, their percentage of neutrophils in the pericardium was 63%. The other six patients didn't have post-op AFib, and they had only 43% neutrophils. Now, that wasn't quite statistically significant, but it was close. The p-value was 0.06. Uh, this just shows us that neutrophils show up in the pericardial space, and they show up in numbers, and they're activated. And, and this analysis looks like the higher your neutrophil count, the higher your risk of post-op AFib. This is a final slide I'm gonna show you of my research here. We looked at these 100 patients and we took the fluid out of the, pericardial, uh, out of the pericardium and then we did PCR on it to look at the levels of mitochondrial DNA. Mitochondrial DNA is a, an inflammatory marker and it's pro-inflammatory in and of itself. Whenever cells die and their mitochondria die, they release mitochondrial DNA, but also when neutrophils show up on the scene and when they release all their pro-inflammatory uh, cytokines, et cetera, they also release a lot of mitochondrial DNA. And it's been implicated in, a, in, a, in several different uh, models of inflammation and damage, mitochondrial DNA itself. So we took the, the pericardial fluid and did PCR for mitochondrial DNA. And lo and behold, we found that in the 40% of the patients that had post-op AFib, they had a much higher level of mitochondrial DNA. The p-value is 0 0.0001. Those that didn't have post-op AFib, and you see this is on a log scale. So at all time points after surgery, 4, 12, 24, and 48, the level of mitochondrial DNA was much higher in patients who had post-op AFib. And that log scale, uh, you know, the log of the concentration, if you put this on, on a standard scale, the, the difference is enormous. So we really were able to demonstrate a difference in the, the mitochondrial DNA levels. And I think that this is a key inflammatory factor that can be contributing to this this uh, com complication we see commonly after heart surgery or post-op AFib. The last thing we did is we did a multivariable analysis to say what factors are, are statistically significant and predictors of post-op AFib in our 100 patients that were in the study. And the only two factors that came up statistically significant were one, age, which you, know, you find in every study you do on post-op AFib, the older you are, the higher your risk of post-op AFib. But number two, the concentration of your mitochondrial DNA was also predictive of whether you would have post-op atrial fibrillation. I want to thank the STS for this opportunity to present in the eight and eight. Uh, it's an exciting time, and, and I hope that you're able to, to gain some insight into this common complication.